When Ian Fleming was on holiday at his Golden Eye estate in Jamaica during 1952, he finally had the time to do what he had wanted to do for years, but due to his naval service, could never find the time. On the 17th of February 1952, he wrote the first 2,000 words. Inspired by his own imagination and his military experience, the manuscript would become Casino Royale. Yet, the main character needed a name. Fleming was a keen bird watcher, so it only made sense for him to have a copy of the field guide Birds of the West Indies on his shelf, written by American ornithologist James Bond. The name struck Fleming. When Fleming finally met the real James Bond and his wife, he explained that the name was brief unromantic, Anglo-Saxon and yet very masculine and that he wanted the simplest, dullest, plaining sounding name that he could find. And the name James Bond really fit the bill for dull and uninteresting. I mean, James has always been a popular name. In England, Fleming's native land, James has always been in the top 20 most popular baby's boys names for over 100 years. Though, funnily enough, during the 50s and 60s while James Bond was being written and made into movies, the name had dipped in popularity and the surname Bond is still popular for the world. This is the amazing thing about the name James Bond. In a vacuum, the name isn't unique or rememberable in any way. It could have become a generic go-to name like John Smith. And no offence if your name is John, James Smith or Bond or any combination of those. But James Bond hasn't become a forgettable generic name. In fact, it's become quite the opposite. James Bond is perhaps one of the most iconic names in popular culture. And while there are other iconic names in popular culture, a lot of them aren't quite as common as James Bond. I'm looking at you, Homer and Sherlock. But of course, the name wasn't instantly iconic worldwide. The first book in the series, Casino Royale, was first published on the 13th of April 1953. While in the UK, the first, second and third prints all sold out within their month of pressing, things didn't go quite as easily in the US. Three publishers initially turned down Bond and when finally landing a publisher in the US, only around 4,000 copies sold across the entire United States. To even help shift books, the title of the book was changed to You Asked For It and James Bond was called Jimmy Bond. They carried on with mild popularity in the States until the early 60s when Bond received a huge amount of attention in the US when the freshly inaugurated President John F. Kennedy listed from Rush With Love in an article for Life magazine as one of his favourite books. Kennedy came to read the books after meeting Fleming, the two joked and quipped together and Fleming even told Kennedy his idea for taking care of Fidel Castro. With the rise in popularity of the books, the film series was inevitable, and in 1962, Dr. No, the first film in the series, was released, with one of the first lines Sean Connery utters as Bond being the iconic line, Bond. James Bond. James Bond is not only an iconic name, it's the key point in one of the most iconic phrases world over. While the line became iconic thanks to the movies, it was of course Fleming who wrote the line to begin with. The line was present in the first book, Casino Royale, and appeared throughout the book series, but in the books there was no big deal made about the line. It was just used by Bond when he needed to introduce himself. When Berkeley Math was brought on to co-write the screenplay for the first film, he had not read any of the books and had to borrow his son's copy of Doctor No. It was here he saw the innocuous line. A lot of the dialogue for the script came from the book but was heavily edited, but that line remained intact. So while the line was created by Fleming, we may have Berkeley Mayfair to thank for transforming it into one of the lines that has been replicated and uttered countless times. But it was not only an iconic name that Fleming gave his spy, he also created an iconic code name, 007. In the James Bond universe, a 00 agent is an agent given the license to kill. However, Bond 7 comes from possibly the real life inspiration of one of the Royal Navy's key achievements during World War I, when the German diplomatic code was cracked. One of these being the Zimmermann telegram, which led to the US entering the war. The telegram was coded 0075. This led to all material being classed as highly classified would be graded 00, with military historian Ben McIntyre pointing out that 007 signified the highest achievement of the British military intelligence. As I stated earlier, in a vacuum there's literally nothing interesting about the name James Bond. A quick google showed me that there are over 1000 James Bonds living in America alone. Most authors when creating names for their characters think of something unique that instantly remind you of them when you hear that name. Hercule Poirot, Atticus Finch and Sherlock Holmes as I mentioned earlier. Yet Ian Fleming went in literally the opposite direction. He found the most mundane, dull, everyday name and used that. Yet through the books he wrote and the film series that came from them, that dull name of James Bond became not only one of the most iconic names in pop culture, but perhaps one of the most iconic names in human history.
I mean, it only makes sense for a spy to have an inconspicuous name right. You wouldn't want to blow your cover with a ridiculous name like Sterling Archer or something. 